All right, Luke chapter 9 is uh, where we're going to start off. And uh, if, you're, uh, if you're new here, we're in the middle of a series right now where um, the, the congregation uh, anonymously submitted questions. So people like you all submitted questions to the church. And we took those questions and we, we put them all together and then you all voted on those questions. And we're going through each one of those questions one by one for four weeks, answering the questions that you wish, wish preachers would talk about. Um, and so... Uh, Last week, anybody remember what we talked about last week? What happens when you die is what we talked about last week. And so we went through all of that. If you missed last week, um, and I thought it was a pretty encouraging message despite the topic, um, go ahead. You can check it out online at therise.church. You, you can watch that as well as any of our messages. Um, today, we're going to be tackling uh, the question, how do I hear God's voice? Uh, next week, we'll be tackling uh, why is racism still such an issue in our country, especially within the church. And then on the final week, we're going to be talking about how do you raise godly kids in 2019. And so that's what uh, our, our series is looking like right now. Now, after that, uh, we're going to talk about uh, one of the most talked about subjects in Scripture. And it's one of the subjects that churches like to talk about least oftentimes, uh, and that is the topic of, of finances, of money. The, the, uh, the Bible is, is chocked full of stuff on it. So we're going to start a series um, after this one called Cha-Ching, which I'm excited about. And um, this is not a giving series. So you can just go, this is not one of the ones like we lock the back doors and we pass the plate every other song and we ask you all for money and when you pay a certain amount, you can leave. No, it's not going to be like that. We're going to be talking about biblical principles that you can implement in your life so that you can manage your money and your money doesn't manage you. And so if you're ever tight on things, if you have too many bills at the end of the month and not enough cash, this is an awesome series for you on trying to see how God can use the gifts that he's given you in a great way. So we'll be tackling that for a, for a couple of weeks, and we're actually going to have a financial one-day conference coming up on May the 4th be with you. And so if you want to be a part of that, you'll be getting some more information on that. I figure if we tie Star Wars into it, the attendance will triple, and that'll be amazing. Does, amen, got a Star Wars fan, one of them, Dustin. Does God's audible voice exist? Got some preachers, I love it, shout me down, keep it coming. Yes, it does, it does. Have I ever heard God's audible voice before? No, I've never heard it. I wish I could say there was like this awesome moment when I saw Erica for the first time when the clouds opened up and God said, this is the woman which you will take to be your wife. And everyone said, amen. And it was like, yeah. nope. I wish I could say when we're going to start this church that God said, you will leave all of your things and you will move to a new city and you will start a church from scratch and it will be my will. No, n n never happened. I have never, ever heard the audible voice of God. There are some people that I've talked to that have heard the audible voice of God, but personally, I never have. And there's a really good chance that the majority of you in here have never, ever heard the audible voice of God in your life. Some of you maybe, but just through my gut feeling and talking with people, I think most of us want that like wow moment, but have never ever had that wow moment when it comes to God's audible voice. And so the, the secondary question is, if you don't hear God's audible voice, can you still hear his voice? And the answer is yes. And so this morning, I, I want to look through scripture and and figure out what God's voice is like and how do we discern what his voice is and how do we know that it's not just some crazy wing nut over here making stuff up and saying God said it? Because I think if you're real, some of you all have, have seen that before. Where people are like, God told me to do this. And like first, like you can't argue, like if God said it, like there it is. But, but second, you're like, I don't know if he did. I really don't know if he told you to do that. And I've heard some, some crazy things. I, I mean, I, I've heard people that, I mean, dead serious have come to me and said, I believe God's calling me to leave my wife right now. I'm like, no. no. Like, no, he's not. 
And, and there's, there's people that say weird things in the name of God. And it's not because God's weird, it's because they're weird. And weird people say weird things and blame God. It's not God's fault, it's your fault. Get some counseling. So that's, whoo, all right. And speaking of counseling, we'll just talk about this for a moment. So I, I counsel people sometimes, for better or worse, people come to me and they say, Michael, can, can, I, can I pick your brain on something? I'm like, sure. I don't have all the answers, but I feel like God's given me a measure of wisdom, and so come on, let's talk. I said, so what's going on in your life right now? And they'll be, well, you know, this is happening right here, and this is happening right here, and I don't know why this is happening, and I feel so bad about this, 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 and I just wish it wasn't, and I wish people would agree with me on that. What are your thoughts? I'm like, well, I understand where you're coming from, but have you ever looked at, looked at it this way? And they're like, well, you know, my, my thought is this and this, and they spend the entire time where they want counseling just talking. And they never, ever actually get any counsel in their life. It's not counseling. It's like a blab session that's going on. And if you want to unload and if you want to vomit everything in your life on me, like, hey, we can be friends. Come on. But do not call it counseling because that's not what counseling is. Counseling is when somebody gives you counsel. And when it comes to hearing God's voice, so often we don't actually want to hear God's voice. We want God's stamp of approval on what we believe should take place. And, and, and we wonder why things aren't working out well, and we're wondering if we're missing God's guidance, when in reality, we're not actually asking for his guidance. We're just voicing our opinion and wanting God to agree with it. So let's look in Scripture at the, the book of Proverbs, chapter 19, verse 20. And we're going to be all over the Bible today, putting together this, this, this web that I think will give us a framework to work inside of. In Proverbs 19, verse 20, it says, listen to advice. We could just like stop the message right here. Amen. Y'all can unpack that for the next month. Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. And we're going to start off talking about this with earthly relationships and then transcend those principles into spiritual relationships it is so important if you're wanting to hear somebody to listen. And, and this is about as elementary as you can get. But if you really want to hear somebody, you actually have to listen to them. Uh, if you've ever been in a room with little kids, lots of them, you can say things you can yell things, you can declare things, and there might be some hearing going on, but they're not listening. And any parents want to be a witness right now? Like, you know what that's like when you're giving instruction and there's, there's no listening taking place. Like, like, it happens in my family. I'll be like, hey, can, can someone wash their hands? We're about to eat, eat dinner. Will you wash your hands? There's no response. There's no action. Like, I know that the, the sound waves came out of my mouth and entered into their ear hole, but something got lost in that moment right there. And so I'll be more specific. I'll start calling them my names. Say, hey, can you go wash your hands? And can you go wash your hands? And can you go wash your hands? And, and I'm not dictating exactly what they have to do because they could wash their hands in the kitchen sink, in the bathroom sink, upstairs, in the hose, wherever. I mean, they could wash their hands wherever, but they're, they're not actually hearing what's going on. And that same thing happens for us that we, 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 we get around our Father who's in heaven and he begins to speak to us, but we, we don't actually listen to what he is saying. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17, we see one of God's greatest instructions. It says, so faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. When you're trying to discern what God's will is for your life, because that's why you ask for, God, for, for God's voice, right? It's not because like you're bored and you want somebody to talk to. Like usually what happens is you're in the middle of a crisis. Something's happened. Something's blindsided you. You're unhappy with him or her or this or work or something like you. There's something going on. You're like, God, why is this happening? What's going on? 
and you're wondering what God's will is in that moment. Like, God, what would you will me to do as I navigate through that? Let me tell you, there is God's absolute will, there's God's specific will, and there's God's general will for your life. And let me say that his general will for your life is the priority. If you want to know what God is telling you and what God is saying to you and what God's voice is, he is telling you he wants you to grow in your faith. That is the, the primary thing that he will ever communicate to you. God loves when you decide that you're going to go get married. But he doesn't care as much about that as he cares about you growing in your faith. God would love for you to consult him when it comes to your job. But he doesn't care as much about your job as he cares about your faith. God, God would love for you to consult him when it comes to financial decisions or when it comes to relationships or when it comes to parenting or where it comes to fill in the blank from what you're asking God's guidance on. But he doesn't care about that as much as he does your faith. That is the, the primary thing that you should be growing in. And that's his ultimate will for your life is to grow in your faith. So then the question is, how do I grow in my faith? And it says that growing in your faith comes from hearing. And hearing comes from and through the word of Christ. And so this is not going to be a shocker to you. But if you want to hear God's voice in your life, This is it. This is it right here. There, I don't know how many pages. I can look in the, there's a lot of them. This, if you want to hear God's voice, this is his voice. Because the ultimate will is to grow in your faith by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the ultimate thing right here that he wants to speak to you through his word. The problem is not that God isn't speaking the problem is, is that we're not listening. We're, we're, we're not listening to it. We, we want to get information really, really quick and him talk to us, but we're not willing to put the effort into it. You know communication takes effort. It, it really does. If you've been married for more than a week, you know. If you've had a friend for more than a week, you know. Like it's so easy to not actually communicate, but just to exchange words and like you, you miss it. Like, like it's, it, it's crazy. I learn things about my wife every single day. And I'm like, how did I miss that for the past decade? Like, where was I? I wasn't listening. And she lets me know. This right here is the easiest way. This is so easy. Like, I could get you a 47-step theory on how to hear the voice of God, or you could just open the book. Like, like, it's right here. Everything that you could ever go through, everything, it's talked about here. And there's guidance found here. And there's principles found here. I don't think it's really so much that we lack hearing the voice of God, but it's that we hear too many things in our life. Because we, we live in the, the information age right now. I mean, you all know it. You have this thing tucked in your pocket and it goes off every 84 seconds, and it tells you what's happening in China, Pluto, in your backyard at the exact same time. And then it goes off again in another minute. And it goes off, and it goes off, and it goes off, and then you got, you know, your Facebook feed, you got your Twitter feed, you got your Instagram feed, you got your friend, you got your text, you got your email, you got your coworker, you got all this stuff coming in, and there's voices everywhere. And that, that's the the hard part, it's not that you're not hearing the voice of God, is that you have so many other voices in your life. You know, there's a limit to the number of voices that you can hear. You cannot listen to every voice at the exact same time. You are not God. And when you give permission to these other voices to be the primary voice, then you're going to begin to miss the voice of God. And let me tell you, all voices aren't created equal. They're not. There's some voices that you do not need to have speaking into you, and there's other voices that you do need to have speaking into you. And so I think the question isn't so much, how do I hear the voice of God, but what voices in my life are louder than the voice of God? 
Let's look at a couple of examples. Genesis uh, chapter 3. We're, we're going to go through a, a tour of the Bible right now on people that have screwed up. Genesis chapter 3. The first one to screw up. She's a girl. Just thought I'd throw that out there real quick. Genesis chapter 1. God gives instructions on how things should go. Like God's will is clear. He said, hang out here, eat here, be fruitful, multiply. He gives all of his instructions. And then a second voice enters into the conversation. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent, a.k.a. the devil, was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? What happened in that moment right there, it wasn't that she couldn't hear the voice of God. Because she heard it, she knew it. The devil even references it right there. The problem is, is that she was listening more to the voice of the enemy than she was to the voice of God. And God's voice is, is small, it's quiet, and it's powerful and correct. And if you ignore it, there's going to be consequences. So, so we see that she ends up listening to another voice and therefore getting out of the will of God. Sin enters into the world, and that's why the person sitting next to you is screwed up because of that moment right there. Genesis chapter 3. Let's go to Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19, verse 17. The, the, the background of what's happening right here is Lot and his family are in a city that's really screwed up, and they need to get away. And God said, hey, grab your kids, grab your wife, I feel like I'm doing a meme from three years ago, and, and take off out of the, some of y'all got that, those who are under 35. Said, said, leave, don't look back, do, do, do not ever look, just, just go. God's voice was so clear in that moment. He spoke through an angel, and he said, go. Genesis 19, verse 17. And as they brought them out, one said, escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. Verse 26. But Lot's wife behind him looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. She was destroyed in that moment. And if you really break it down into the original text, it wasn't that she was like running. It was like, ah, dead. No. What it was is she was running and she began to look back and question, is it better to be where I was or where God wants to take me? And she began to listen to this voice saying, maybe things were better the way they used to be. Like, God, I know you're calling me to a different lifestyle. God, you're calling me to something different, but maybe I can just creep back to that old stuff I used to do. And when she begins to look back and consider all of those things, at that moment, she's listening to the other voices saying, this will satisfy you, and not listening to God saying, I'm the one who's going to help you escape. Again, it wasn't that God's voice wasn't present. It was so clear just a couple of verses before, before. But she began to listen to other verses. Luke chapter 10, verse 40 and 41. Mary and Martha are hanging out. Martha, Martha, Martha is busy, busy, busy. She's doing stuff. Jesus comes and is speaking. But she gets so focused that she misses it. But Martha was distracted in verse 40 by much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. And begins to explain to her that, you know, Martha, these voices right now, you're, you're so distracted right now that you're missing what I'm trying to say. You're, you're so busy doing things that you're missing. And you know, some of y'all, Y'all serve in the church, you serve other places, which is great, you should serve, but you're serving so much, you're missing the word of God in your life. It's not that God's not speaking, it's that there's so many voices around you that you're not listening to it. Peter, y'all know Peter, he's like the really, really bold one who says things that you're, you shouldn't say. All of y'all have a friend like that, don't look at him right now. And so Peter's that guy, and so Jesus is hanging out on a boat with his 12 best friends, and he says, walk out on the water. And so Peter's like, <laughs> I'll do it. And he walks out on the water, starts walking toward Jesus on the water, miracle taking place right now. But he begins to sink. Why? 
Not because God's voice wasn't clear, not because God wasn't powerful, but in Matthew 14, verse 30, but God saw, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. He became so preoccupied with the voices around him and the challenges around him and the waves around him that he missed the voice of God. And so my, my, my question isn't, and I'm taking your question, I'm, I'm gonna flip it on you for a second. It's not, how do you hear the voice of God? The voice of God is present. It's here. But the question is, which, uh, which voices are you allowing to be louder than God's voice in your life? God compares us to sheep in the book of John. And that's not a compliment. Sheep are dumb. And you're a sheep. So turn to your neighbor and say you're dumb. In Jesus' name. Y'all are rude. Sheep, if no one cares for them, will not be able to see. It just grows over their face and they just, they're blind. Just all of a sudden happen. They, they, they can't take care of that. They have no ability to defend themselves. One, one of the only animals out there that like a predator comes... They're screwed. There's nothing they can do. Like there's, it, it, uh, if they do not trim the wool around the hind quarters, it gets awkward. We're just going to leave it right there. You can go Google it and throw up. Like it's just, it, it, like they are dumb animals. They have no hope when it comes to things. They need someone in there. That's who Jesus says that we are. Glad you came today. John chapter 10, verse 4 through 5, Jesus is comparing us to sheep, and Jesus is saying he's the great shepherd. And what, what Jesus says is when he has brought out all his own, and when he's brought out all the sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow them, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the stranger. So he's saying sheep follow the shepherd. If they don't know the voice, they run away. He compares us to sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So if you're a sheep, do you know the voice of your father? Or are you so preoccupied with other things going on around you that you've, you've completely missed it? And it's really easy for that to happen. But, but as, you, as you begin to dive in and as you begin to get in this book and as you begin to, to, to read it and understand it and get the principles out of it, you start to understand what God's voice is like. You get to understand who he is. And so then when you're walking through the grocery store and all of a sudden you feel the, this prompting inside of your spirit or, or, or you have multiple job opportunities and you feel this, just, this, this leaning one direction, you can go, hmm, either that doesn't sound like my God or you know what? That lines up a lot with who he says he is in his word. And through establishing yourself and through rooting yourself in this, you'll begin to understand what his word is like and what his voice is like and then be able to listen to him as he guides you places. And there are some times when God's just Holy Spirit just comes down and just, just directs you and you, you can know it's his voice like you've never known it before. And you'll feel, you know, go pray for that person over there. And you're like, I don't know why I should go pray for them. And then you're like, well, they're limping. And it says that if the sick are having problems, you should pray for them in Jesus' name. And you go, well, that lines up with the word. And you go over and you pray for them and something happens. Like, wow, that's incredible. Or, 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 or you're, you're in the middle of a marriage moment. And husbands, we were actually talking about this at our, at our men's group this, this last week. Shameless plug for that. And it's talking about how you, how, you should, um, how you should sacrifice yourself and give yourself up as Christ loves the church and you're in the middle of an argument and you go, you know what? Maybe you're feeling in your gut like I should be the one who apologizes first and I should be the one who initiates something as far as reconciling that particular moment. And you look in the word and you're like, that lines up. God's spirit is leading you in a particular spot. If you want to hear God's voice, you need to get in here and that will help you be able to determine as the spirit moves in your life. And I think there's, there's some of you in this, here in this morning, and I'm going to go and invite the worship team up right now, where, where, where you have missed out on God's voice about who you are. Because that's far more important than where you're going. We talked about it last week. You're going one of two places. Like, that's easy. 
And he's, he's so much more concerned about, about, about who you are and, and, and how he made you. I, I think that that's the beautiful thing about the voice of God is that, that, that it tells us what our identity is, who we are in him. And, and, and the world will often begin to tell you what you're not or how you fall short or how you failed or how these things, just this negative, 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 negative. But God's voice says something completely different. God's voice frames you how you truly are. Do you know that you're actually a son or a daughter of the king, as it says in Scripture? Did you know that there's actually a, a, an inheritance for you in heaven, according to the Scriptures? Did you know that there is a, a literal plan for your life, according to the Scriptures? And that the Lord can be a lamp unto your feet, and you can follow him, not by your trust, but by, by his trust, and that, that's going to help guide you in where you're supposed to go? God, God tells us so many things in scriptures, and, we, and we, we know them, but we begin to forget them a little bit. And, and so I just, this morning, and this wasn't going to be in the message, but I, I just wrote down some things that Jesus says about you. And I, I just, maybe you all want to know this. Like, you want to know what God's voice sounds like? Here is what God's voice sounds like about you, not about your particular situation, but about who you are and how he's made you from the beginning when he made you in your mother's womb and formed you. I am blessed in Christ. I am free in Christ. I am being built in Christ. I am complete in Christ. I have been buried and raised again in Christ. I am alive in Christ. I am chosen in Christ. I am a son or daughter of light in Christ. I have been given the spirit of power in Christ. I have been given the spirit of love in Christ. I have been saved in Christ. I have been set apart in Christ. I have been born again in Christ. Is this resonating with anybody this morning? It says in this word, I am forgiven in Christ. I am anointed in Christ. I am in the image of Christ. I have been redeemed in Christ. I have been healed in Christ. I am the salt of the earth in Christ. I am the light of the world in Christ. I have everlasting life in Christ. I have peace in Christ. Is anybody agreeing with this? Feel free to stand up on your feet. Feel free to stand up on your feet and celebrate it this morning. I am more than a conqueror in Christ. I am an heir to righteousness in Christ. I have grace in Christ. This is what his voice sounds like. I am called in Christ. I am victorious in Christ. I am new in Christ. I have strength in Christ. I am a saint in Christ. I have been sealed with the Holy Spirit in Christ. I am a citizen of heaven in Christ. I am his and he is mine in Christ. Would somebody give him some praise? Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, sing it out. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Last week, the question was, what happens when you die? We flip that to say, what is it that you're going to leave behind? What's your legacy going to be? This week, the question was, how do I hear the voice of God? And again, we're going to flip it a little bit. And I want to ask you, what are the voices that you're listening to that you're allowing to be louder and more impactful in your life that you need to get rid of. You know, when you, when you get home, and maybe it's tonight, 
Maybe it's tomorrow morning. This is the posture I would take. It, you know, let me just share a, a quick testimony with you real quick. This is, I wasn't going to share it, but I'm going to share it. I plan these messages out months in advance. Like, that's just, I'm, I'm a believer in planning. I like to plan because of it. All right. And so this was planned, and you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen up to that moment. And last night, probably starting around 10 a.m., that's not a true statement, last night, starting around 10 p.m., like all of these random statements started coming in. I, I mean, questioning everything about who I kind of define myself as. I mean, questions about, about finances, questions about, you know, where we're going to send our, our kids to, to school, questions about marriage, questions about health, questions about people that have just passed away. And like, I, I, I was struggling to sleep. And so about midnight, I was like, forget it. I'm just going to go downstairs and just pray for a little bit. And so I, I go downstairs and, and I, I'm on my computer and I'm uh, I'm going through the notes for this morning. And as I'm going through that, I'm looking at all these outside voices, and then I'm looking at what God says. And so, so what what I did, and this was I don't know maybe three this morning. I just, I just took the Bible and I, I just I just got down on my knees and I said, God, I am so easily distracted by the things in this world. God, I listen to so many voices that aren't yours. God, I pray as, as I open up your word and as I look through these scriptures, would you speak to me? And, and I didn't hear an audible voice. But what I did hear is truth after truth after truth after truth found in the scriptures about who I am in him and what he has planned for me. And I don't know who that speaks to this morning, but I would encourage you to not let the outside voices have a greater influence in your life than God does. Find time, five minutes, just to say, God, show me who you are in your word. Don't know where to start? Google it. You got it on your phone. It's buzzing anyways. And I believe that when you listen to God's voice more than the voices around you, that's the answer to your question right there on how do you hear God's voice in a crazy world like we have in 2019. God, I pray for each person in this room that you would speak to them. And God, if you want to speak to them in an audible voice, we say yes and amen. But God, we also know that you've given us your word. It does not return void. And it is profitable for every season we could ever have. So God, I pray that your voice would be not just heard, but that we would listen to your voice. With every head down and every eye closed, if you're here this morning and you know that you're listening to the wrong voices and you need more of who God says you are in your life, would you just raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for? God, I pray for every single person this morning that's saying they need more of you in their life. God, would you silence the distractions? Would you silence the false voices? God, would they, would they, would they not be so consumed with the things that aren't of you? And God, would they be like sheep that know their shepherd's voice and are encouraged and are protected and I pray all of this in Jesus name Amen Amen Well I believe that whatever you might be going through this morning that we have a miracle working God and he wants to bring you life through your particular circumstances and situations. And let me, let me give you one bonus tip before we dismiss. 
don't wait until the crisis to start listening to his voice. When you look at successful relationships, they are built on amazing communication that starts at the honeymoon and continues all the way through. Don't wait till the crisis. If things are, are better than ever right now, don't miss your opportunity to be founded on his word and hearing his voice. And next week, oh, next week's going to be a good one. We're going to tackle the most heated subject in our country right now, the subject of racial tension, particularly what's going on in the local church because it is a problem and I believe that God has a solution for it. And so I pray this week that you'll hear his voice like never before. And I pray that we'll see you next week for what I believe is going to be an absolutely amazing service. I hope you stay warm. May God bless you. May his face shine upon you. And we will see you next Sunday for part three of our series titled, Hey Jesus. Hey Jesus.